this is the presentation for this crystal glitch. It's the 10th and 3rd. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our presentation. <coughs> well, let's all consider for a moment, you know, what is crystal glitch? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> What is it? That, I've been asking myself this all morning. Uh, <laughs> if you look at the words crystal and glitch, they don't seem to go together. When we think of crystal, we think of something precious, something rare, colourful. Uh, and then when we think of glitch, we think of technology, we think of the failure of technology. These two words don't really go together. And that's kind of the point of Crystal Glitch, you know, it doesn't really go together. It was sort of thrown together. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so Maddie's being a bit modest, actually, if we're honest, because if it wasn't for Maddie, who was the, the driving force behind our concept, to be honest, um, we used the social media platform Facebook, we had our own page, and due to Maddie's amazing mood boards, her words that she consistently kept putting up just so to keep us inspired and motivated. Have you got those words? I do, yeah. Uh, so the words we were thinking about were malfunction, glitching, technology, failure, and then uh, on the other side we were thinking about neon, thinking about colour. Uh, we were thinking about computers, and uh, so on. It eventually came together to be like an amalgam of all of these things, and we decided that a crystal glitch was in fact going to be a place, it was a sanctuary, it was a place where upon entering, anything that you had prior to that, any any kind of um, bad feelings, it, it went, and um, when was, you went into the crystal glitch. It was almost like a religious experience, and it was also kind of cultish, it was... Um, yeah. Very sort of like a, an exclusive club. Yeah. It was a, it's most like a performative art in the experience of going into the crystal glitch and um, forgetting all the troubles that remain on the outside. So we're going to pass over to Caleb. So, I'm a rationale for making artwork. It sort of developed quite organically. So we started out by visiting the studio as a group and just identifying work that we found appealing and attractive. And then through conferring through discussing the things that emerged from those artworks, which is how we started coming up with this concept of the crystal glitch. So, um, and then through identifying these artworks, we were in conversation with artists, not just leaving notes, but by talking to them directly about their artwork, what its themes were, asking them, who do you know that, you know, would you like to collaborate with? building up a network of artwork that was in relation to each other in the building because we identified that this kind of glitch theme is quite on trend at the moment. Um, and then we were using like social media and stuff to network with people as well, communicating as a group over the internet and in person and with artists themselves. And then so as this, um, so some of the artwork that we selected we decided wasn't part of this concept that was emerging, so we decided not to include it. So it sort of developed quite organically as it went on. So our roles within the group, um, we quite quickly and easily kind of gave out groups and um, gave different roles to different people. Um, we also found that we didn't always stick to our roles. We were quite flexible. We mingled together, worked as groups. Um, we also bounced off each other's ideas. So. Maddie came up with her list of ideas. This kind of generated different themes and different ideas we could have used. Um, we had Facebook chats, like we said, that we updated each other with daily, so we were always kind of kept in the loop. We always knew what was going on and um, kind of what we had left to do, where we were and what stage we were at. 
the posters are made up of kind of little sections of some of the work that was featured in the show. And the idea behind them was to give you kind of a glimpse of what to expect, but not to give too much away. So that when you walked in, you were kind of taken aback by everything that was in there. Um, so the, the pink ones are Sarah's work, and then the crystals are um, scanned bits from Phoebe's work. And they're just kind of photoshopped and sort of merged together. Um, so for the press release, we basically wanted to give an idea of what crystal glitch is, but at the same time, not to give too much away. So we wanted to bring forward the concept and explain and explain the work of the artist, but not expose them too much of what the artist's work was about. So for that, we did interviews with the artist and looking at the words crystal glitch and sort of breaking the words apart and seeing what they mean individually and together what they um, also meant, which meant working with Maddie and stuff and sorting out the concepts for that. And, um, <coughs> and um, for the image of it, we wanted to use something we felt represented Crystal Pitch from Phoebe. So to be consistent, we used um, the same image from the image from the posters, which was Sarah's work. The accompanying text artist statement. Yeah, with the accompanying text artist statement, we wanted to, um, they were done from like, we did the interview, so we spoke to some of the artists, like face to face, and then some of them weren't available, so what we had to do was send them questions, and they answered those questions, and then from then we generated more in-depth information about their work, about their practice, and say perhaps where they wanted to take, where they wanted to take their work further, and we wanted them as part of the exhibition and as something the audience could access externally after the exhibition. The um, hard copies of the publication at the exhibition, which kind of acted as an exhibition guide for the um, audience, and it also had a direct link to the blog, so people could also, in real time, go onto the blog and access that as well and read as they <coughs> went. Um, these were the questions that we used to inspire the writing for the publication. Um, we sent these to each of the artists and then they each sent back a very different response. And from that response, be it really brief and vague or be it really in depth, we kind of extracted a similar structure for each one. So it gave the audience that um, information about what the, what the motivations and inspirations for their work were <coughs> and how their work exactly um, related to the ideology of a crystal glitch. So if you read the publication, they all interpreted it in their own way, and it was quite interesting. Um, we also collaborated with a graphic artist to create these logos. They're all individual for each um, artist's work, and um, it just shows like a sneak peek of their, their um, artwork, and it evokes a bit of... Um, interest and it's meant to be used as an advertisement almost so it coerces in viewers into looking further into the artist's work and leads them to our blog and all the websites and platforms of the artists themselves. Um, we didn't label any of the work in the gallery so we decided to do a floor plan and uh, the floor plan was provided in the publication so this meant that um, if people wanted to know more about the artist all of the information was in one place which was a lot easier for them to... Um, so initially the blog was supposed to be quite formal, so that is the, um, to show their work if they needed to. But uh, in the process of creating the blog, we decided to show the process of making the exhibition as well. And we also showed how things could go wrong and how to fix them in the time we had to install the words. So this is just further clips now from the exhibition, which you can see it's a pretty good turnout. Um, yeah, so we, we just have everything that from beginning to end. It, it showed like installation shots of the work and also the shots from the event as well so that, that it, we had the blog name written on the back of badges that we handed out at the event. So the idea was that people could take the badge home, look it up and 
essentially use the blog as a way of sharing their artwork, a show that they've been part of with other people in the school, so to document the event as a happening. We had really positive feedback in general, and we'll hand over to the evaluation. Uh, I think in terms of how we worked, it was the first time we'd ever done a big uh, kind of project together. We'd worked a little bit in workshops and things, um, but as a group, I think it went really well. We were quite aware of the time frame from the beginning, so we made decisions quite um, kind of quickly but decisively, and once we sort of got the idea in our head, we then kind of could make more decisions, and the processes um, that we went through, we had meetings, um, as you said, and it was kind of a chance for everybody just to give their ideas, to collaborate, and sort of work together. Um, the actual install was somewhat problematic because of a lack of power sockets, um, so we had to switch around uh, kind of various different pieces, but it ended up working out quite well. Uh, we had a lot of positive feedback during and after the exhibition. So people said that having the blog available was um, a great way to showcase the artist's work further because we had other information on the blog that was not provided during the exhibition. Uh, several artists commented that the writing that we provided with the work was um, very effective and put across their point of view about their work very well. Um, the badges were a great idea. However, we did have a comment that said the sound could have been tweaked with a bit in the space. Um, we also had some alternative concepts about our work. So while we thought that it was about the uh, crystal glitch sort of natural and techno like technology, uh, people thought that it was about um, ladder, uh, shadows and light and also about sound and temperature. Um, there was some um, external, like, internal reflections as well. We all kind of thought that we could have maybe used um, better use of sound, like we could have incorporated maybe more music or actually gone further with the glitch aesthetic and kind of um, almost manipulated the experience exactly so we could have had like, random noises throughout and make it seem as though things were going wrong but they were actually controlled. There were a lot of things that, in hindsight, we could have probably added, but it was unfortunate the time scale being so soon that we had to show ours. We also had one view, I'm just going back to the slide before, one person that came to our exhibition and looked at it so much she's written an entire essay about it, so that will also be available on our blog if anyone wants to read that because she's written a really good review of it, so she's in her second or third year here. Um, that's everything. Thank you. On the press release, yeah. um, or, I mean, well, the idea was to try to have consistency between them. Um, Do you mean the titles of the art or yeah. yeah. the yeah. body of the font? Yeah, that's the name of that. Because they are the artists. Yeah. And the titles of the body. It, look, it's kind of like just trying to keep this sort of consistent concept throughout the show. <coughs> it wasn't just about. Um, it, it was, like Maddie mentioned, it was almost a cult-like event in a way. That's why we had these badges and stuff. So by creating this sort of tight face for it, um, it's almost trying to almost give it a sense of branding, a sense of... Because we wanted to sort of really create a show that's quite indulgent in a way. And, we, and creating its own sort of world because um, it, the idea of Crystal Glitch is almost like it's you're stepping into a world and um, quite a few of the artists we had their work was about immersion in other uh, environments mm -hmm. so it was about immersing people really which is why we chose to sort of create this whole context around